Yo, it's Cracking Cats. This is your boy Seth Walker out here with Miss Kaylin Mitchell. And uh, the little munchkin Freya is running out here, so you're going to hear her in the background. I uh, just wanted to give you all a, a little bit of a, a preview of what's coming up on the Valentine's Day show. So, uh, Miss Kaylin, it's great to be with you today. It's great to be with you too, Seth. I'm really looking forward to the show. I haven't performed in quite a while. Um, well, none of us have, to be honest, right? Right, the COVID thing, but even pre-COVID, you know, mom life, and you've kind of been bouncing around the country, living in different places, which has been really cool. Um, and for a little while up in Nederland, uh, the train cars, we've had a open mic poetry night going once a month. That's kind of slowed down recently with the winter. People don't want to poetry outside so much. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> Netherlands a rough place to hang out outside in the middle of winter. Just gonna be it real. is, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Uh, but it's really beautiful and peaceful, and I really draw a lot of inspiration from nature, and uh, it helps to be in nature all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, we definitely appreciate you um, running the, uh, the poetry uh, show uh, for everybody up yeah. there. Um, it's definitely nice uh, as poets knowing that there is there are still a few venues that are out there that have survived on um, this crazy pandemic. So you know, uh, poetry reading up at the train cars. And when do they when do, do those again? Third Thursdays at seven p.m. Third Thursday, seven p.m. up in up in Netherlands. Um, so. Also, one of the reasons I was really excited to have you here is uh, a lot of people don't realize how deep your poetry background is. I mean, like, so I'm, I'm a street educated motherfucker. This is really <laughs> um, but, so tell us a little bit, I mean, how did you get into poetry? What, what was your drive? What was your education? I first got into poetry in high school. I never really liked it for those first couple years. I was like, what the hell is this? As I think most young people are. Um, and then when I was in 11th grade, a really cool English teacher who was also a musician, he used to come in and play the Beatles for us in class. And he really just encouraged us to express ourselves poetically and didn't really set all those uh, like, you know, strict forms on us or anything like that. Your poetry has to look this way. Um, and he also introduced me to Walt Whitman, um, who was the first poet that I really uh, fell in love with as a writer because he doesn't have any form. He blew that wide open. It was just these big long lines across the page and just like gushing and passionate. And I think that's how I really like jumped into poetry was from that. Um, and then I went to the University of Maryland for college, and I was an English major there. Took a year off, worked, you know, did my thing, and then I went to Europa for graduate school. Um, so now with, the, with all that education in English, do you feel like uh, you know how to speak English now? No. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of the same, that's, yeah. I talks real good. Yeah. <laughs> one, of, one of the best compliments I was passing uh, from Winoka, Oklahoma. And I stopped to get gas, and a uh, little girl at the gas station, she said, you sure do talk, Purdy. Oh, I love That's it. it. Oh. Look how funny. I'm Bob Bubbles. You're Bob Bubbles. Bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cool. <laughs> so we have we have a munchkin uh, bubble machine going on in the background too. So that's really nice. Th this is not Instagram effects. These are real physical effects, <laughs> old school. Real bubbles. Real bubbles. Real talk. <laughs> That's honestly like the coolest part about being a parent is how excited little kids get over simple shit like bubbles and Christmas lights and it's like yeah that stuff is so cool you're right like but as a writer too it's um, you know you don't lose like that wonder for the world around you. Mm -hmm. you know? So I know the last the last book you wrote was actually no, based in. Said uh, like right. Nordic folklore. Right. Don't yeah. Don't so don't tell me, tell me a little me. bit about that nerd, that nerd project. <laughs> so I, um, I no. self-published a book no. almost no. three no. years ago now, no. it was right after Freya was born, and I put it out. She's going to be great. No. No. Um, it's called no. The Same as the Three Norms. If you're interested, it's on Etsy for sale. Um, little shameless plug there. <laughs> Look, that's the point of this interview is a shameless plug. Oh, good. We are shamelessly plugging our show into <laughs> your feed right <laughs> now. Feed upon our plug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so the, the sayings of the three norms, and it was really steeped in Norse and Germanic mythology. Um, and kind of like 
fermented really with my own like modern eco-feminist yes, tales mythologies. Uh, so it's not like totally ancient. It's not totally modern. I really um, look for those echoes of the ancient in our modern world and how those archetypes have carried over. Mm. Like American gods, but in poetry, they're probably better written at the end of the day. You know, I'm not really up on American gods. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mostly worship old world gods myself. I mean, <laughs> but hey, you know, we all pray to the golden arches on occasion. <laughs> I did it! Yeah, the holy, holy saints of, of, of Big Mac <laughs> and 99 cent ice cream cones. <laughs> It's like, yeah, I mean, any, any time where I just really feel like I need space, you know what I'm saying? I'll go get McDonald's, because then there's no way my wife is going to sleep in the bed next to me. That's, you know, yeah. that's why. That's, that's how it works. Anytime I need a good colon cleanse, I go to McDonald's. <laughs> well, Kevin, thank you for coming out and, and having a little chat with us today. You guys, uh, February 14th. We're going to be uh, broadcasting an awesome show that's going to be recorded at the Boco Cider House in uh, North Boulder. Shout out to the Boco Cider House for being an awesome venue. Whenever COVID does lift, we're going to have a place to be able to go to. So look forward to these shows actually happening live as soon as COVID permits. Uh, thank you again, Kat, for coming out, man, for real. Thank you, Seth. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Woohoo! Thank you!